Hello. Hey, howdy y'all. I was not doing as I was told. Thank you for being here. Bitcoin matters, and the future matters, and the future is in the hands of young people. We have some great educators here to talk about what it means to help young people and the next generation of the future to understand and to think well about Bitcoin. So here's a topic to get us started, and we'll see where it takes us. One thing about Bitcoin is that it's not just theory. It's a piece of software you can actually use. To understand Bitcoin often involves actually doing stuff. So how have you found ways to involve doing or activity in your own Bitcoin education efforts? And Dee, I think we want to start with you because you've got something cool uh, to share with us. Well, thanks. Yeah, I mean, let's not just talk about Bitcoin education, right? Why don't we actually start doing something fun and maybe play a little game? Maybe give away some prizes? Anybody interested in winning some Satoshis? Yes? Okay. So for those of you seated and for those of you who are standing, how many of you have a Lightning wallet that works? Okay. You have SATs that are sendable? Okay. I have this idea for a game, and it's actually my first time running this particular game, and I want you guys to be my guinea pigs, but I think it's really cool. So one of the things that I like to do as a Bitcoin educator is create interactive learning activations. And why don't we start with a giveaway? So if I could get a slide up for our trivia, I have this crazy idea. So we have some haters among us that might say things like, oh, the Lightning Network doesn't work, or oh, it doesn't fulfill the promises that some folks have promised. But that couldn't be more wrong. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask a couple trivia questions. And instead of just blurting out the answer, you're gonna actually tell me the answer over the Lightning Network itself. <laughs> proof that Lightning works and proof that it's fast. Now, because Lightning is private, I will have no idea who sent me an answer to the trivia question. So you are gonna to have to identify yourself. And this is further proof that Lightning does the things that we say it does. It's fast, it's private, and it works. <laughs> All right, so you guys, those of you who have Lightning wallets, can get them locked and loaded. Okay, open up your Lightning wallets. And you're going to be sending, actually, a sat or two to a particular Lightning address. Now, not every Lightning wallet supports Lightning address, okay? But Stripe does. So if you have Stripe, if you have Phoenix, if you have Wallet of Satoshi, you have access to Lightning address. Now, if you don't have Lightning address, don't worry. I have you covered you can head over to d plus dot plus slash trivia and you can still play this game. All right, you can still play this game, you can still enter your answer to the trivia question, and then you can pay the invoice that will be generated, okay, with the wallet of your choosing, and that includes Cash App. So for those of you who have Cash App and famously don't have access to Lightning Address or LN URL, you can still play. So is everybody ready? Okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna answer my question over the Lightning Network, okay? You're gonna put your answer, your name, and a four-digit pin, just a four-digit random number, into the note field, or the comment field, or the memo field of a Lightning payment to me. Now, you don't have to send me all your money. You can send me one Satoshi, it's a tiny fraction of a cent. And it's well worth it, because what are they gonna win if they get the answer right? What are we gonna offer these lovely folks? Even more Satoshis. More Satoshis, okay. We're gonna give you more Satoshis. I have 100,000 Satoshis. Okay, my personal prize pot, I didn't get a sponsor this time. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> That's my own personal money, but I think these guys have some things to sweeten the deal. Also got a book. A book, okay. If you have a child, and we can do the Satoshi Camp next year, free admittance to Satoshi. A free kids camp, okay. A book. It's pretty dark. You got Satoshis on the line, what, what else? A Bitcoin diploma and a Me Premier Bitcoin t-shirt. All right. Okay, so now we have even more prizes being thrown at you. So who's ready to play? Okay, you got your Lightning wallets locked and loaded. You're going to send your name, the answer, and a four-digit pin, just a four-digit random number, to trivia at D plus dot plus. Now, that's my Lightning address. Again, if your Lightning wallet doesn't support Lightning address, don't worry. Head over to D plus dot plus slash trivia. Okay, first question. I think this is a good one. I think this is a good question. Who was the original, okay, the original author of 
the original first Bitcoin improvement proposal, the first BIP. Now, the first BIP actually defines the BIP process itself. And it wasn't written by Satoshi. So don't say Satoshi. I'm giving them too many hints. I'm giving them too many answers. So you're going to put your answer into a lightning payment to me. Oh, they're coming in. For those of you that said lightning doesn't work, kindly go fuck yourself. <laughs> so we got the first response. All right, the first response was, it was Donald Trump. Um, no, it was not Donald Trump. No, it was not Satoshi. And no, it was not Hal Finney. So the answers are pouring in. So clearly Lightning's working. I mean, those answers came in in, what, under a second? It's private, I have no idea who you are. Um, and it works. So we don't have the correct answer yet. So maybe we'll give people an opportunity to keep playing as we um, ask the panelists more questions. Thanks, Dee. Maybe we'll turn it to Adam and you can address that same opening thought, which is how do we teach Bitcoin by doing? What are ways that you engage actual practice in your own education? Yeah, 100%. I think you have to make learning fun. And I think the aim of education has to not be rote memorization because, frankly, that's not learning, right? And so the premise that we take is we teach students critical th thinking through engaging exercises where you get to learn the problem that Bitcoin solves. You get to play with wallets. You get to build them. You get to send lightning transactions. And every student, when they leave our course, and this is interesting because I'm based in El Salvador, you know, you see a lot of people come in to the classroom with a passing familiarity on what Bitcoin is, right, and how to use a wallet, but they're using the Chivo wallet or the government wallet. And a major sign of our success is that after you go through our program, you understand what Bitcoin is, the problem it solves, and a lot of those students who come into the classroom having only used Chivo wallet end up using a self-custodial wallet. And that, and that, to me, is a huge metric of success, but it also speaks to the quality of education. And I think making education fun, not teaching people what to think, but how to think. And that's what we do at Me From Air Bitcoin. Zach, would you like to speak to that? I think that works now. Okay, good. Because we switched nice. Uh So at BSTEM, what we do is we're known as Bitcoin STEM, but in uh, doing business as BSTEM. So we take traditional STEM uh, after school education and summer camps, whether it be robotics or 3D printing or Java or Python or digital art, comic book design, all that kind of stuff, but we put a Bitcoin element in there. So a lot of times when parents just want a summer camp, whether it's a chess club or a soccer camp or whatever it may be, um, they're still going to do that. And there's a lot of great coaches out there that are adding Bitcoin to sports activities. We're doing that with uh, elementary STEM. So that's one of the things by doing is kind of showing that in the world of 3D printing, it will be added to manufacturing with micropayments. So we could teach 3D printing and 3D modeling and show how the future will use Bitcoin and do some simulations of like Satoshi's and stuff. So really just normalizing Bitcoin in elementary education is what we're trying to do. This has been pretty positive and optimistic. Let me take things in a slightly different direction. What are some examples of ways that you've really bungled as an educator, and what did you learn from that? So maybe the rest of us uh, don't have to fail in the same way. We can fail in new ways. Well, it's not our fault, right? It's the fault of the shit corners and their clever narratives that are ever evolving. Now, unfortunately, the narrative for this epoch, in my opinion, is sort of the worst because it's so intellectually dishonest that it's actually gaslighting. They know that we don't want their shit coins. They know we don't want their ICOs. They know now that we don't really care about DeFi or NFTs. So they're coming out and saying, well, we know you like Bitcoin. We know Bitcoin's all that matters. We're Bitcoin too. We're an L2. We're built on Bitcoin. We use Bitcoin. Fuck you. No, you don't. If you cannot unilaterally exit, and if you have any kind of shitcoin token or DAO, you have nothing to do with Bitcoin. You are a Bitcoin affinity scam. And the folks who basically had pioneered this were stacks. They're the worst, and now we've seen a million copycats who are doing the same. So, yeah, I mean, you just have to really 
avoid anything that claims to be a Bitcoin L2, again, unless you can unilaterally exit and there's no token. And by the way, since we've been talking, the answers have been pouring in over the Lightning Network. This is so freaking cool. This is my first time playing this game and I'm obsessed with it. Like, I'm obsessed with this game. This is so cool. Uh, Vake. Who's Vake? Vake. Yeah, I've been back. So, I got a bunch of wrong answers. Um, they were saying Roger Ver. They were saying Adam Back. I got a bunch of Adam Backs. I got a bunch of Hal Finney's. I got a bunch of Satoshi's. I got Luke Dash, which was really close. Because Luke Dash is actually the author if you go to the BIP itself. But I asked for the original author. And so, fake in the back said Amir Taki. He's an interesting cat. Very interesting cat. And so, Vic, you are the lucky winner of our trivia. Now, we got uh, Mark G and TJ both also answered Amir Taki. So the answers, like I said, are pouring in, but Vic was the first. Here it up for Vic. Strong work. Adam, let's, let's go back to the failure modes. Yeah, it's great success. Yeah, yeah, I, so I think failure mode is, is this, like, know your goal and optimize for the goal. Like, what's your fitness function? And for us, it's, we don't want to teach a generation of people to love money. We want to teach the next generation of people how to use money, what it is, so that they can do more of what they love, right? And so, I think a very interesting path that we take is critical thinking. It's not, it's not very, um, it's not focused on uh, accounting and it's not focused on things for our audience that they don't need to know. It's education for empowerment and we layer in, you know, for example, how to choose your own wallet, right? It would be really easy for a nonprofit to take money from a sponsor to just put a wallet in there, right? There's a ton of people that I could talk to that would line up to take that deal with me. And that's not what we're about, right? Because if we want a different world, we have to do everything differently. And education is the foundation of that. So instead, what we do is we go, okay, well, Bitcoin.org has this awesome slug, how to choose your own wallet or select your own wallet, right? We built that into the curriculum. So if you sit in the class, we teach you the criteria of how to choose your own wallet. Then you get to make the decision, right? And so I think like there are a lot of early things that I looked at that you know that we do really, really well, that I'm really, really proud of, right? This is the kind of classroom that I would have wanted to be a student in, and I was not a stellar student back in the day. Um, we want to engage everyone we can and equip them with the criteria and the skills and the critical thinking they need to make the right decisions to lead better lives. That's what me from Mary Bitcoin is. So, uh, yeah. Zach, how about you? Uh, yeah, so the first time I really got into Austrian economics was in 1999, and it was just the most miserable experience of my life from 99 to 2011 when I found out about Bitcoin, because I just wanted to tell people that the money was broken and for them to buy gold and follow Ron Paul and all this kind of stuff. And then when Bitcoin came along, I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. And we started an education organization for elementary schoolers, and I still felt like I just wanted to orange pill parents. And we didn't, weren't very successful when we were at a full frontal with Bitcoin at the top of the marquee. So I'm a big fan of Stacey Herbert. I remember when I lived overseas, we would watch her on the BBC, and she would teach me these words like the Overton window. So like our goal is to move Bitcoin into normal conversations that elementary that parents of elementary school students can have at the bus stop. So I think that's one of the things that I've learned is that you're not going to be able to convert everybody, and you don't have to. You know, we're going to find the remnant among, among us, and we're going to slowly normalize Bitcoin in conversation. I'm really proud to be part of this panel because we're all doing that with different um, target populations of students. That's what I found, is be patient and just keep focusing on the mission of education. I think unfortunately when it comes to Bitcoin education, we often are limited on the amount of time that we get. And this is actually one of those situations where Bitcoin education gets paused because we have a live scarcity auction happening in just a few moments 
uh, with some very big pieces happening. So if you could just please tell all of these people where they can find out more, follow each of you. Um, and, uh, if you wouldn't mind me taking some further questions at the, at the back, so we here haven't heard enough about Bitcoin education, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. D plus dot plus. Yeah, yeah, D plus dot plus. Um, I wanted to do more trivia questions, but I'm so happy that this worked. I'm so happy we all get to see the Lightning action, the Lightning Network in action. And they can get your prize afterwards, okay? Where can we find you? Myfirstbitcoin.io. Take a look at the team, reach out. We're an open source Bitcoin education product, project. You do not need our permission to use the curriculum. You do not need our permission to contribute to the curriculum. And I hope that each and every one of you makes a contribution in the future, whether it's correcting something that we've done wrong or adding something that you see is obviously missing. So huge honor to be here today with you guys. And just thanks, guys. You can find us on uh, Twitter X at, at BitcoinStem or bstem.co. And if there's the same sentiment, if you're not part of our network, you want to run an after school program or a summer camp or work with your local community educators, we would love to help you and pass on our best practices. So thank you very much for your, for your time today. Yeah, do we have time for one question? We're out. We're done. Okay. Thanks all. Thank you very much.